In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how to create a heart display that subtracts hearts each time your player character takes damage. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is set up our UI. So you can head over into your hierarchy, go to add UI, and for now we're just gonna add an image. It'll default to this ugly white square, but that's all right. You can find whatever sprite you're going to be using for your hearts and you can drag it over into the image box and drop it there and now you'll have a heart. At this point you can drag it to wherever it is you want it to show up on your screen. And I like to have my game and scene view side by side here so that I can make changes in the scene but see what it'll look like in the game. Now at this point a really important setup is to click on your canvas, go down to your canvas scaler, and instead of constant pixel size, change this to scale with screen size. That'll just set it up so that when you eventually build your game and send it out to other computers, no matter what size of resolution they're working with, the hearts will appear the same size relative to the screen. You're also going to want to set your reference revolution, resolution so that it matches whatever resolution you're using in your preview. In my case, I'm using 1920 by 1080, and I want to make sure that those match. All right, I'm going to quickly rename my heart here so that it makes sense. It's actually called heart. And now you want to make sure that you set up in your UI as many hearts as will be the max number you can get in your game. So if eventually you'll want to have max health of 10, you'll want to do 10. And that's actually what I'm going to do. At this point, I'm just going to quickly set up my hearts. All right, and now that we've got our UI set up, we're ready to start some coding. I'm gonna create a new script here, and I'm just gonna call this one health display. Now, because we're gonna be working with UI here, you're gonna to need to add a line up at the top, and it's a new using. We're gonna be using Unity Engine.UI. This will give us access to all of the UI functions. And we're gonna start down here under our class by declaring a couple of variables to begin. First is going to be a public integer, which will be our health, and another public integer, which will be our max health. Down below that, we're gonna create a public sprite, which will be for our empty heart, semicolon, and another public sprite for our full heart. Last thing for now is we also want to make a public image. And this one's going to be an array called hearts. Now, just to show you what that looks like in Unity, we're going to pop back over. Now in Unity, I'm going to click on my player sprite. And right away here, I want to add this script. All right, now you'll notice that some new boxes have appeared. We can leave the health and max health for now, but we are gonna to wanna to add the sprites that we're gonna be using. So I can head back over to my sprites. And for the empty sprite, I wanna drag my empty heart in there. And I also wanna drag my full heart into the other one. At this point now, the game will this will allow the game to know which type of heart to display later on in our script. Another thing that I wanna do is take all of these hearts here that are gonna be displaying on my canvas and put them down into the full heart into the hearts list. You remember in our script, we made an array for hearts, which means that we can have as many as you want. You just, however many you drag in here will appear on the list. I'm just gonna lock my inspector, head over here and grab all of the hearts that I want to display. And I'm gonna drag them into that list. You'll see that they all appear now. So what we wanna do now is create a function that will constantly check our max health and make sure that our UI is displaying that number of hearts. So to do that, we're going to head down into our update function. And we're going to create a for loop. Now you can generate this syntax by typing for and then just double tapping tab. We're going to, just going to change max to be our hearts dot length. And then this will be good to go. Now, if you haven't used a for loop before, they can be a little confusing at first. But what they do is essentially they create a loop here that just runs for a set number of times. And the way it decides how many times to run is that it will create this integer i, which starts at zero. As long as zero is less than the number of hearts in our heart array that we just created in Unity, it will keep running the loop. It'll run it once, and then it will add one to our integer, and then it will check to see if one is less than our heart length, and as long as there's at least one heart in there, it will run again, and it'll keep going. And essentially what it does is just check each of the hearts in our array. 
Now what we want it to do each time it goes through here is do a quick check to see if our integer is less than our max health. So on the first time through, our integer will be zero. And as long as our max health is more than zero, it will move on to the next step, which is essentially just to enable our sprite. So we'll take our hearts, and in this bracket, I'll put I. So in this case, it'll take heart zero, and it will enable it. Enabled equals true. Then the second time through, it'll take heart one, and as long as I have that much health, it will enable it. Now, I'm also going to add an else statement. So if our max health is not greater, so say on the 10th time through, say I don't actually have 10 health, then what it's going to do instead is take hearts i, and it will not enable the sprite. Enabled equals false. So what this looks like in Unity, you'll notice at the moment I have no hearts displaying, and that's because my current max health is zero. If I change it to one, one heart will appear to, and onward all the way up to 10. Now, I can't go past 10 though, simply because I've only added 10 hearts into my hearts array below. All right, we're getting there. Now we just need to make it so that our hearts are full based on our health. To do that, we'll head back into our script. Now what we wanna do this time is very similar to what we did to make the UI appear in the first place, except that instead of checking to see if our integer each time around is less than our max health, we're gonna create a new if statement that's gonna to check to see if our integer is less than our actual health. If that is the case, then it's gonna take the heart from our list that we're looking at right now, and instead of enabling, this time it's gonna take its sprite and it's gonna set it equal to a full heart. Now, if our health is not greater than the integer, then it's gonna do hearts integer dot sprite is equal to empty heart. And so the first time it runs this loop, I will be zero. And as long as our current health is more than zero, it'll turn on the first heart. And then it'll keep looping for each of our hearts. So back in Unity now, I'll set my max health to 10 to get all 10 hearts. And if I add one health, you'll see that one of them lights up, two, two of them, and onward. Working pretty well so far. Now the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is to actually link this script so that it can speak to our player health script because obviously we wanna make sure that our health is being updated automatically and not we're not doing it manually. First thing we'll do then is head up here under our class and we're gonna declare a variable. We wanna make a public player health. Now if your player script that controls your player health is not named that, you wanna make sure that this is whatever the name of your health script is. I'm gonna name this the exact same thing but with a lowercase p at the beginning. This just allows my script to be able to talk to the player health script. Head down here to my update function. And what I want to do is I want to constantly be checking to make sure that the value of health in this script is equal to, and it's going to look inside the player health script. It's going to look at the health variable in that script, and it will set them to be equal to each other. And I want to do the same thing for my max health. I want to make sure that my max health is equal to, look inside the player health script, and take the max health value. So all you have to do to link up those scripts now is to take a look here where there's this new box for player health in your heart display. And essentially you just wanna put your player health script there. And since that script is right here on your player, you can literally just drag it into the box. With that done, your scripts are now linked up. So your health script will be talking to your heart display script. And every time you hit an enemy, um, you should be taking damage. In my case, I take two damage at a time. However, there's one little problem. You'll notice when you take your final hit that your player is destroyed before the um, heart display gets updated. And that's actually just a little fix we need to do. And essentially, it's just that it's destroying him before it has a chance to send the information to update the health. So to fix this, we're going to head back into your health script, actually. If you followed my first tutorial, you probably have things set up so that when your health gets down to zero or lower, the game object is destroyed. And we're just gonna actually change this now. And actually this is something you'll wanna do for later in your game anyways, is destroying a game object is not a good way to work your death. 
instead of destroying the game object, what we want to do is we're going to turn off your sprite renderer so that your player disappears. And we're also going to disable movement. So to do that, you're just going to need two references here. The first one is going to be a public sprite renderer reference, and we'll just call this one player SR. And you're also going to need a reference to whatever your script is that affects player movement. In my case, it's a player movement script. This will allow this script to talk to both of those in order to disable them. Now, instead of destroying the game object, what we're just going to do is we're going to take your player sprite render dot enabled equals false. And similarly, player movement dot enabled equals false. Back in Unity now, your player health script will now have those two new boxes, and we just need to fill those in. So we need to make sure that your player sprite render goes into there and that your movement script goes into its correct box as well. Now when you get into the game, you will find that we're taking damage just fine. And that once our health runs out, we do in fact lose our hearts and the player also disappears. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please take a moment to like the video or to subscribe to the channel. In the meanwhile, this is the Night Runner saying thank you.